You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to episode 38 of the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're talking about the go-home shows to WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, surprising fact that I actually stayed awake for both shows. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah, see? The very so least. Shocked. And yeah. I wasn't on my phone most of the night. Wow. Yeah, huh? and I don't know why. That's really weird. <laughs> because most of it was really eh? not necessary to watch. Yeah, it was pretty, I mean, pretty to, uneventful. To be fair. <laughs> One thing happened. A couple things happened. Well, one important thing happened. Okay. What is that? Well, I should say, only one one, one story uh, things happened. Oh, 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 I gotcha. Because yeah. uh, the show starts with Stephanie. Mm. She comes out and makes a major announcement, and she, first she teases a fourth competitor in the match. Yeah. Um, and then she's like, it's going to be me. And then she's like, oh, I'm just kidding. And then I'm sure a lot of people thought at first she probably wasn't kidding. You never know. Um, never because she had announced earlier in the day that she was going to make a major announcement. Right, right. So right. I figured maybe she'll be the special guest referee. Or Something. The, or the she's unifi- got to shoehorn herself in there somehow. Yeah, or she's unifying the titles. Um, but also. the actual announcement is that it's going to be winner take all mm-hmm. at the uh, during the main event, um, which kind of raises the question are they going to unify the titles well i don't know i mean there is a possibility i mean i could see them doing it in one sense and in another sense i'd be like eh. i don't know why you wouldn't say that though going in <clears throat> oh i don't know because that would make sense <clears throat> because I mean, when when they did that originally with the undisputed title right they said going into it that they were going to merge the titles it's true so um and, I mean, do you really see one person defending both titles? Like, one on Raw, one on SmackDown? Oh, that's not going to happen. No, I but know. It, but it, they could do, like, just a woman's belt that'll probably have, like, <clears throat> it's like half blue and half red or something stupid like that. I'm sure it wouldn't look that bad. But No, they'll probably figure out. They end up um, doing a pretty good job with the titles. I, the I liked the idea of SmackDown's title not being on the line. I mean, it made sense. It did. But... We're not the crazy old bastard that makes these decisions. It's true. Um, honestly, them saying that it's for both titles, yeah, I, it makes me feel like there's less of a chance that Becky's going to win and more of a chance that Charlotte's going to win. There's definitely a possibility of <laughs> I, that. I know that sounds weird. No, 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 no. But, well, there's really no reason behind how I feel about mm-hmm. it because it's just, you know, just, I guess, a hunch. <clears throat> Because nothing changed besides the stipulation in the match. Right. Nothing favors anybody except for the fact that you kind of feel like, or I feel like, they want to do, uh, I guess, more programs with other people with Charlotte, and it's easier to do it that way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Asuka technically has unfinished business with her. Right, right, right. So I, I feel like that since she's not going away i think i feel like that that was the easy reason mm-hmm. for giving her the smackdown title true. she it, could be the only one i would see defending both titles on both shows well yeah she'd be the well right. ronda wouldn't do it no well. if she's even going to be around yeah uh, who knows um, about that also I, I think becky's too synonymous with smackdown mm. so i don't it really kind of seemed weird for have her move okay. around anyway and, I mean, I haven't really been a huge fan of having so many crossovers with the brand split since we've had recently. Well, I think, well, some of them were kind of just, they kind of had to. to well, make I mean, like we had Samoa Joe versus uh, that, that was Angle last see, week. And that, it, that's different, though. That was, we like, that didn't make sense yeah, storyline Yeah, I get wise. what you're <clears throat> talking about here because it was for the Raw Women's Championship. Yeah. And that's so, why they did it, yes. They, they built a compelling story. But then they took, <clears throat> they took a principle, mm. and they just went crazy with it, like they like to do. So it's like, oh, this is interesting. We're going to have someone come from one show to another. Mm. But now you have <clears throat> Becky and Charlotte coming to Raw. Mm-hmm. Now you have Joe and Mysterio coming to Raw. Um, and then you have the NXT guys doing right. both shows. Um, Alexa Bliss came to SmackDown, yep. which kind of makes sense, I guess, because she's the host of WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, it it was just kind of randomly thrown in there. It's cool when it's a one-off. When it becomes a regular occurrence, it kind of loses its luster. It's true. Like the Iconics were on Raw. Yes, they were. So, 
<clears throat> you are lucky you did not get to see that match. I guess. I don't know. Well, we, I don't know what was going on between Sasha and Peyton, but it wasn't good. There was two spots that they blew, like Sasha was going off the ropes, you know, when she arm drags mm -hmm. her opponent. And just, it, it was just a mess hmm. twice. I mean, Beth Phoenix looked great. She looked like, you know. She didn't really miss a step. But. Well, she was more of a kind of Natalia-esque wrestler to begin with. Yeah. So it's not like it's really that hard to... As long as you're in the physical shape to, you know... True, to, yeah. To do it, you're not really... You can't really get too rusty in terms of, like, what you are doing. It would so. be interesting, and this is completely off topic, but, uh, like, Rob Van Dam wrestling for Impact uh, tomorrow night on their show, and then mm -hmm. he's now signed to the company, but... Uh, but someone who used all the acrobatics and things like that, as you age, you tend to probably have to change your style up. He probably does a lot of that stuff like while training, though. Yeah, I guess that's true. I feel like that's something that he just does on his own. <clears throat> Whereas if you're done wrestling entirely, mm -hmm. you're not going to be doing stuff you normally do. Fair like, you'll stay in shape, but you're right, not going right, right. to be doing like the same kind of training. So that would be my guess. Yeah, I, I feel like if he planned on coming back to the ring, that all of that this was, was... Yeah, well, I, I don't think he ever stopped. I just think he was, it was periodically that he was wrestling. Oh, I know. I'm just, I'm oh, just, okay. I'm just saying I'm just that saying. even if he did stop for a little while, if, <clears throat> if he planned on doing... If, if, if his goal was to wrestle, then that's what he was doing. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> anyway. Yep. Um, we had uh, Lesnar and Heyman come out. Yeah. And uh, they said they're going to end Rollins' career, mm -hmm. which seems like it's a little premature. Just a little. Um, a little bit. Yeah, the Rollins comes out, mm -hmm. and they kind of do a standoff. Yep. Rollins uh, kicks uh, Lesnar in the nuts. Yep. Low blows him twice. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Rollins actually ends up on top. Yeah. So you know what that means. Ah, <laughs> uh, you said it. Suplex has, City. You said that has nothing to do with the outcome of the match. No, it doesn't. I know. But... <laughs> It's just funny. Um, actually, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of people in stuff like like got on top mm. that we kind of want to win stuff. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, like Oscar won the battle royal, or was the mm. last one to throw someone out, and that um, obviously here with Seth. Right. Um, I feel like there was more. Oh, than that. Drew attacking Roman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Aaron Corbin beating Mysterio. Yeah, but we, we don't. That's not what we want. <laughs> I know. Silly man. Uh, we're um, just waiting for your reaction. Yeah. All right, maybe I don't have as many, uh, um, I guess examples as I thought, but still, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Um, but yeah, used to drop the longest promo in history. Yes, he did. That's funny. He comes out. He's just standing there in the dark, and then he points at the screen. <laughs> They play a package of him beating uh, Triple H a few times. And then uh, he just says, Hunter, you can kiss my ass. That was it. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, it was fine. Um, Elias is delusional. Well, you know, that's Elias. Yeah, he was standing outside MetLife Stadium and said that he's going to be the greatest performer in history to be there or something, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Um, Still, still don't know what what they're planning on doing with him. I don't think they know. I think they're just... He's going to perform. No, not at WrestleMania. I just mean with his character in general. Elias? Yeah. He is not going to change at all. And he's just going to be doing the same thing over and over again forever until they release him. Forever. Or until they release him. Yeah. Which will probably be in a year or two. Who knows? <clears throat> Who knows? That's true. How many active ro roster members they have like 98 or no it was, it was over that right i thought they showed it on the john oliver clip how many people on were. on the main no, roster no, no, i just mean i meant um the wrestlers that are employees oh it's yeah. probably way over 100 yeah it was it was something the number was ridiculous because just in nxt they probably have like 40 yeah that's true at least because you got to think the people that aren't regular tv mm -hmm. talent yes because there's a lot of people that they just keep on signing and signing and just signing. Stay off TV but you never forever. see them. Yep. Like, we never saw Braun before he came to the main roster. Well, yeah, he was just in the uh, Rosebuds. That doesn't right? count. Though. I know. But that's, it was also that was... on the main roster. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, there's a few other people. Sure. No, I, there's a, there was a couple of note that came right to the main roster. Uh, more so before, like not like now. The old NXT you're talking about? Yeah, mm. be, because now NXT is kind of like a showcase, whereas before it was seen as an actual developmental. Right, right. So now they just sign all indie talent and or people that they feel like they can really get behind and sure. show them off on... Uh, it is mostly indie talent. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, now it is. But I mean, if they can get behind, there's no truth to that. Well, I meant in NXT. Yeah. It's more like Triple H can get behind. That's not, true. Not Vince. Yeah, yeah. Vince ruins everything. Pretty much. Um, we had the whole Corbin and Kurt Angle thing because they did a... Uh, Video tribute for Kurt Angle. That was nice. He was crying. He was crying. Um, but yeah, Corbin comes out, ruins everything. Um, Man, he, he's such a good heel. He he does everything by the book that a heel should be doing. Yeah. I mean, you know, and everybody, everybody wants hates, to see him. Yeah, everybody hates him. <laughs> so he's doing that something right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, he was... Cor- not Corbin, uh, Mysterio was originally supposed to face Kurt Angle, and that match got changed, so it ended up being Baron Corbin versus Rey Mysterio in the main event. Yep, main event. Which Baron Corbin won yeah. with a deep six. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, but I think maybe that was because Mysterio got hurt. Probably. I don't know if... That would be my guess. I don't know what the deal is with so, that. So, funny thought. What percentage of main events do you think Baron Corbin's been on Raw this year? A lot. Yeah. A like lot. higher than anybody else, probably, <laughs> which is really funny. How many when you times think about we, it. you know you see them face the Shield? Yeah, I was gonna say between matches, Braun. Yeah, between matches that he was in that were like tag team matches and stupid mm-hmm. main events, like he like I'm sure it was in a couple of main events with Balor and. Oh yeah, yeah. So if you go back six months, it's probably even yeah. higher. Yeah, that's, but that's it's an just so funny thing to think about. Yeah, so but the, I mean, per, yeah. one person that. All the fans despise, regardless of anything. And this is the guy that's in all of the, the big storylines. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not good, but you know what I mean. It's, it's interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so then we got Aleister Black and Ricochet versus The Revival again. Mm-hmm. For the um, fifth time, Yeah, maybe. Which is funny, because, I, I mean, the, the match was very good. It, they, they got going, mm-hmm. and... You know, not, nothing else needs to really be said about the match, but yeah. uh, the Revival ended up retaining because I don't remember who was under the One ring. of the Revival was underneath the ring, and they grabbed Ricochet's leg so mm, he couldn't, couldn't run back, back into the yep. ring. It was pretty spot. cool. Yep, it was by the, te- by the book for and the it Revival. Was, and it was different. Yep. <clears throat> so, um, so, and the best part is that their apron was up, so we could see them, mm-hmm. them underneath the ring. Yep. Well, yeah, because Ricochet did a spot where he jumped over the uh, ring post onto the outside and took out... Uh, dash and dawson yeah um i know that you watched the condensed version um we also saw heavy machinery versus bobby Roode and chad gable oh i mean i was in the bathroom during the match so i guess i technically didn't see all overall but didn't matter yeah um heavy machinery won i figured but i don't understand why they even have that match from what i walked in on is Roode and gable kind of or Roode was looking at gable and like you know Kind of, it seemed like he was second guessing everything, so oh. I don't know if they're actually gonna do something here. Well, Bobby Roode shouldn't be a babyface. <clears throat> well, that too. Chad Gable shouldn't be in a tag team. So, um, <laughs> so it was interesting because the months leading up to this, we were getting constantly Roode and Gable versus the Revival on the house show circuit, and they were putting on like forty minute matches and everything. I figured they were gonna have a big match at Mania or something like that, and then they just completely dropped everything it's true the revival don't have a match as of right now right well it was speculated that it was going to be Ryder and uh, hawkins they yeah. challenged um yeah for, uh, so if this match happens <clears throat> you think this is where that he finally gets his win i mean why not well because what other way can you possibly um humiliate the revival <laughs> you really can't so that they, they got they, that's because that's what the end game is here right Vince just you wants to humiliate them. And, you know, Hawkins eventually has to get his big payoff. He doesn't have to. No, no, you're right. He doesn't have to, but it would make sense storytelling-wise. Yeah. And obviously they don't really care about making the revival look like fools. So it kind of, no, no, no. it all kind of makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, I mean, 
They've announced three matches for the pre-show already, so. Yep. If that match was going to be on the, it would be on the pre-show. I would hope so. Yeah. Um, Unless yeah. they want to make a big deal about Kurt Hawkins' win. <laughs> they definitely don't care that much. No, I know. Um, but, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, we saw Roman and Drew. Uh, Roman was backstage getting interviewed, and Drew attacked him from behind, beat the crap out of him. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I must say that WWE has gotten me interested in two matches that have are nothing more than grudge matches, and this match with uh, Drew and Roman and AJ and Orton on SmackDown, and both had, you know, the good reasons. The build for this one isn't hasn't been well, that Roman bad. It hasn't been around. No, I'm just I'm just saying it really it hasn't. I'm not discrediting the build for mm. it. But I think it's more interesting in who they choose to win. Than, uh, yeah, well, than, yeah, I think it's more intriguing. Yeah, than the actual match itself. Because I'm sure the match won't be bad. It won't be great. No, but I, I think Roman's a better opponent for McIntyre than a lot of other people. That's true, because they're big, strong yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, old it, school wrestling. Yeah. So no but threats. I'm just but the thing is it's more of the finish. Not the finish, but like the outcome than the actual yeah, match. Yeah, but you know, it's it's different. It's that's true. It's, yeah. yeah. I agree. And it's not, it's not Drew versus Seth or Drew versus Dean. Yeah, which is a, a sad <laughs> because, like, you know, I'm a big fan of Seth, but when he wrestles Drew and they put on a good match. It's just boring after a while. Yeah, it's, well, it's like Seth and Dolph over and over oh and over again. Yeah, I remember that. So. And they had great matches, too, and that's, yeah. that's the worst part is you, you end up making something that's good stale. Yep, exactly. Worst thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Um... Then we have that tag match that we talked about last week between uh, the six woman, yeah, yeah, Becky, Charlotte, and Ronda versus mm. the Riot Squad. You know, I mean, for the crappy treatment that the Riot Squad has gotten, they're on TV almost every single week. Um, I wouldn't even say almost. I, mean, probably, I think they yeah. are on yeah, TV. At least one week. member, yeah, yeah. Um, am... Yeah, it's it's true. <laughs> so they're getting exposure. Yeah, yeah, no, least. absolutely. But I, uh, I guess you always need somebody in that role. Yeah, so. It's they, kind of like uh, the Baron Corbin role. Yeah. <laughs> so Ronda makes Liv tap, obviously. Yeah. And then immediately goes after Charlotte. And then Becky gets involved. So they all start fighting and they do the thing where the security comes down. They beat up security. Then the yep. police come out. Mm -hmm. And then they all get arrested. And, um. Well, Ronda got handcuffed first. Yes. And then Becky went to attack her. And then she got handcuffed. And mm -hmm. then, as Ronda was being escorted up the ramp, Charlotte that's when Charlotte went. hits Ronda. And now all three of them are being escorted to the back. Yes. Um. And this was a spectacle for a, num a number of reasons. It was something, man. And I was entertained the entire time. Yes. Yeah, so, for one thing, they're all handcuffed. So they have no choice but to use their legs to attack. <laughs> a lot of kicking. And. At one point, Becky and uh, Ronda were in the back of the same cop car, and they were just, like, flailing at each other. Yeah. It was so weird. It was. It was so weird. But but I don't care. I know. Um, Charlotte almost decapitated Ronda, but she no-sold it. Oh, my God. It was great, because, like, clearly, she kneed her head into, into the, the side of the car, yeah. and then all of a sudden, Ronda's like, like eh, yelling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was that was a beautiful shot. Yeah, like you couldn't have ended it any better than that. Yeah, um, Rhonda actually managed to put the car in drive with her legs. That was a little too far. No, 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 it wasn't. This was like all the great things in wrestling bundled into one. I, it's just so ridiculous and over the top. It was yeah. like John Oliver said, "It's yeah. the best thing you'll ever see." Yeah, uh, and you know what? Unfortunately, not falling through a table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and this was the perfect go home segment for the main event if only it had main evented raw it's true <laughs> but don't worry uh, that stat increases with baron corbin main eventing once again yeah uh, so uh but yeah and then uh we got braun beats up a couple of jobbers yeah they were did you see the whole reason this happened or whatever i just saw they were backstage oh okay and like, ec3 and tyler breeze were there yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. and they said oh they were watching the 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 what's it called the weekend SNL. update yeah, yeah and he said like, okay you're michael che and you're colin jost <laughs> and meet me in the ring oh uh, boy yeah. um or braun yeah 
I guess. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess he could be teaming with the ten year old again. That's true. That was that wasn't bad. I ent- I was entertained. By it that. was entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Um, and shit like that as well bring casual fans to watch. But like, it's true. And you know, and we'll get to it on SmackDown. Wait, it, it happened on Raw too. What? Where they? I thought they had an eight man tag or something. Oh, it was Jinder versus Apollo Cruz. And they had the rest of the uh, Andre the Giant. I know there was something with all the yeah. Andre the Giant battle and royale. They people. did the whole spot where everybody got thrown over and everything like that. Which you know I, I get is for fans that like us that watch the product all the time. But there are casual fans that are watching, and those are the ones that they're probably it's like, oh, this is how this works. Right. Stupid for us, but I get it. Yeah. Um, granted, I don't know how many casual fans are going to tune in for the pre-show, which is the, <laughs> those matches it are is, going to be on. It is free, though. It is true. It's on YouTube, and it's on USA. But you have a hard time getting people to watch a three-hour show a week, and you expect them to sit there for seven and a half hours? No, I'm not saying that. No, but, but you could have people who don't have the network and don't plan on buying the network and just want to watch the pre-show. That is true. Because it is free. That is a fair point. Um. Unless you subscribe yeah. today. Mm-hmm. And you can get... Thanks. Yeah. Anyway. I thought it was $60. <laughs> Is that what Rhonda told us a couple weeks back? Uh, Probably. Yeah. She's She doesn't know anything. No. She's new here. Ah, so um, we're going to get the demon. Yeah, it's a waste. <laughs> let's, let's have him bring out the demon against somebody who we already know he can beat. And not Brock Lesnar when he faced him. Yeah. So. This is dumb. I feel like this Love was... It. I feel like uh, Finn was supposed to face somebody else, but that got scrapped. So they're like, oh, I guess you're going with Lashley again. Who else really is there from the face? It doesn't matter. I'm just I'm just saying, like, it could have been. Like, could have brought Sister Abigail back. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> the world we live in, where Finn Balor needs the demon to take out Bray Wyatt dressed like a girl, <laughs> but he doesn't think he needs it to face Brock Lesnar. You're thinking again, man. I know. I know. Obviously, the whole point is because they don't want the demon to lose. So. Oh, no. I was just kidding. I mean, Logic is yeah, not yeah. something you can... Yeah. You're just supposed to watch as a fan, man. Enjoy the show. No. That's what I'm told. Not happening. That's what people tell me. Not happening. I don't like it. I mean. And Baron Corbin won. We already talked about that. Yeah, who cares? Deep six. Yeah. Lots of rotations. Yeah. It's a cool move. It is. But it's still not his finisher. It's not. Um, Maybe he's like, I don't know how to perform the end of days on this guy. <laughs> yeah. Flip him over. Yeah. It's, he's too He's too small. And before we move on, it was said that Dean Ambrose gave a farewell speech after Raw, so... I guess it's true. Maybe. It's weird. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it, but it just kind of makes sense. He's not booked on Mania. No, no. And... So, unless he comes out and interferes in something, but... Yeah. Could be nothing. Cost, uh, he'll end up uh, coming out to congratulate Seth and then turn on him and we'll get Seth again. Christine again. Now again. The Universal Championship. Yeah. Eh, whatever. All right. You know they would do something like that. Oh, they would. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, SmackDown show yep. starts with the Kevin Owens show. Yep, and you fell asleep. I did. How could you do such a thing? Because I was tired. Your favorite wrestler. I do I do like Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Um, so... He brings out AJ and Randy Orton, I believe. And they kind of have a pissing match. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. They, 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 but they've done the whole time, you know. Both of them bring up points. and They've built a match without actually having to wrestle, which is mm-hmm. so rare. So it's, yep. they, they did something right. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. You want to sell the match. The whole point is the big match that's going to happen. Yeah. I just hope we can... Do this and have the match, and that be it, and not do. All right, let's have three more matches after it. Like yeah, that, that would that would kind of defeat the purpose. Yeah, um, that was AJ and Shinsuke, AJ and Owens, AJ and uh, Joe. Joe, yeah. All right. <sighs> yeah. Um, after that, yep, we got eight man tag, um, Rusev and Nakamura mm-hmm. and the Bar. Yep. Versus Ricochet. The of Nations. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. yeah. Ricochet, um, Alistair Black, and then the, the Usos. Usos. Yep. 
Uh, the Usos pin Sheamus after a double super kick. Makes sense. Tag champs to uh, win the match. Obviously. Hmm. Uh, Alexa Bliss comes out and well, she's... We were just talking about the whole logic thing before, and, you know, most things don't make sense. This did. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, but, yeah, Alexa Bliss comes out and she announces that it's going to be a fatal four-way match for the tag this, titles. This was because last week when the Usos uh, gave up their spot in the gauntlet match, the well, tag team gauntlet match. they forfeited. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, giving up your spot suggests okay, that someone yes. else takes. Fair enough. Yeah. So, but yeah, that she said it was funny the way she put it. She's like that that act bears punishment. That's fair. Yeah, which is obviously a, an authority kind of figure right. thing. And uh, you know, I think she would fit that role well. She would fit as a um, a messenger, mm. kind of like, um, and I know this was much dumber. But when they had the anonymous raw general manager thing, oh, it was dumb. Where she can just pop up on either show, right, which would be right, fine, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and just like give bad news well, to. That's and that's the beautiful thing about Alexa Bliss is she has so much value that you could use her both as an in ring competitor and as you know, say something like this. That is assuming that she's actually cleared to wrestle. No, I know, but I'm just saying that that's yeah, you could. What they have yeah. in her yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. It's it's a lot easier to rely on someone, or I should say, it's a lot easier to to market somebody who can talk mm -hmm. than it is for someone who can just wrestle. Yeah. So even if her sure. match quality isn't the best, it's still. I mean, she's a lot easier to to right. put put out there. It's true. So it is true. Um, and then the Iconics come out and yep. say they're gonna win. The tag titles, which is not going to happen. Um, yeah, you're probably right. And then, in the most puzzling booking decision <sighs> yeah, in the world, they know. seem to have forgotten who The Miz is. <laughs> His entire career. Yeah. So, all of a sudden, he comes out acting like he's Roman or something. That so, stupid I'm, fucking headband. I hate that, it so that much. That bothers it's you so a lot more dumb. than it should. So, well, no, no, no. Just because that's like... That's him. That that's the Miz. He's yeah. you know a goofball and all that crap. Yeah. He likes to make fun of himself and all yeah. that other stuff. But then they put him in this role here, and it's just like these two things don't add it's up. It's true. Um, and he's acting like a tough guy, and so he's taking on Sanity in a handicap match. Three on one. He wins. <laughs> was Why? False, false count anywhere. Why does he win? <laughs> like I don't care that he's going. Well, there's your example. Miz stood tall. Well, and yeah, but I'm like. <laughs> What what is the purpose? What does he gain from this? Nothing, because well, I guess I mean, he Greg looks Sandy good. Wouldn't gain anything. No, either, but... I like he looks good. I mean, a win, but it just doesn't. If he's gonna win, why book him in the match? Just have have this be a talk segment. Don't have a match. You're wasting time. It's so dumb. I don't know. And the Miz isn't the guy who's like, yes, he's new to this babyface thing. Mm. So I, maybe they're trying to figure out what works. And sadly, this works. It doesn't make any sense from a booking standpoint well, yeah. because it completely goes against like, everything. The last the been, ten years yeah, that yeah. he's been around, but you're but, just supposed to forget it. Just shut up and watch it as true. a fan, man. Yeah, yeah. Accept what you're given. That's yeah, it. Yeah, but uh, but it worked. It was weird, but it worked. Oh yeah. Um, they fight back into the concession area. Is that where the no? They went, went through the back? they went through the back and they went into where the. Um, it's so weird how they have it set up. It's a, there was like a, a loading area. Yeah, they went to the left of the stage. And right? they yeah. yeah, and then they went outside. Mm. And so they were in like in the parking lot, or the back parking mm. lot. Oh right, right. And right. then and that's then a cop, Becky, yeah, a cop car pulls up with its sirens on, and then Becky gets out of the back seat, like it's nothing. It would have been better if she was driving the car. It would have been. I said actually the same thing earlier today. Yeah. yeah. How did she get out of the back seat? Or the cop get out and let her out? No, she got out of the oh, backseat. Okay. Yeah. I know that's not possible, so. Uh -uh. Anyway. Uh -uh. Um, uh, she comes out. She says that uh, she plans on winning, yeah, obviously, at Mania. Sure. That's pretty yeah. pretty uneventful. Yeah. Um, and then they have the most well odd thing in the world. It was originally supposed to be Rey Mysterio versus Andrade. So I'm guessing this got put in its place. I would imagine so. I mean, I mean, the Miz segment made sense in a sense to happen. Oh, this yeah, yeah. This is yeah. just random Yeah, this nonsense. is random nonsense. 18-person uh, mixed tag match. Yep. F 
five men, four women on each side. Yep. Lana was in it. Yep, the Hardys were in it. Yeah. Uh, who else was in it? Carmella was in it. Carmella, was Naomi. Truth or was he just yeah, Truth was yeah, in yeah, it. Was... Um, Asuka. Uh-huh. And then they had uh, Mandy and Sonya. Andrade was there, Zelina. Yeah. Um, Nikki Cross. Mm-hmm. Heavy Machinery. Yep. It, it was... It was a mess. Yeah. Oh, EC3 was there? Yes. <laughs> it, it was crazy. Oh, um, boy. And, uh, yeah, so the match ends up getting thrown away because chaos ensues. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mandy, Mandy and Sonya were there, right? And did you say that? Or yeah. No? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just thinking back to the spot with Mandy and, uh, what's his name from Heavy Machinery? Otis. He was dancing. She was just standing there, and he was going to, I guess, run into her. That happened turn. on SmackDown? Yeah. I missed that. Yeah. I know every... He did He did the... Uh, oh, yeah, he did the... Uh, caterpillar. Caterpillar, yeah. yeah. I'm like, what the hell yeah, is yeah. the word? Yeah, he did the caterpillar. It's so funny watching him move because he's so big, but he's so little at the same time because, like, you just, like, because you picture a wrestler, you think, like, at least six foot, maybe a little taller. Mm-hmm. And like, like a big Lars Sullivan shrunk him down. I guess so, yeah. Because even Lars isn't that big. No, he's but wide, yeah, but he's yeah. not. He's not tall. Mm-mm. And it's just it's so strange because proportionately he just doesn't look right. So having him do the caterpillar is funny. He's entertaining though. Yeah, I'll give him that. Yep. I mean, I, I'm surprised actually how decently they've gotten on the main roster. Like the heavy machinery is a fantastic act. Yeah, yeah they yeah, really yeah. are. And they appeal to a an audience like for I the guess main that's roster. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you I get think the that, casual audience. I think if they had stuck around in NXT longer, they probably wouldn't have succeeded as much as if they. No, it didn't. They didn't make sense as a team in NXT. Yeah. Um. So the last two people in the ring are Jeff and Oscar, uh-huh. and Oscar they like hug, and then Oscar's like, "Get out of here!" Throws Throw Jeff out of the over. ring. Yep. And then as Jeff's landing, he like lands on Otis or something, or he's supposed to. And Otis grabs him and he just rolls over with him. It was so weird. Yeah. Oh yeah, because yeah, we had the spot where uh, Nikki Cross jumped onto Shelton Benjamin's mm-hmm. back. Well, that's kind of where the whole thing started. Yeah, they went over the top rope together. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, we got Joe versus Ali. Yep. Ali actually controlled most of the match, and then Joe managed to get him in the Coquina clutch. Yeah. Ali passes out. They didn't really do much with Joe and Mysterio, right? No. And like I feel Oh, like, that match isn't going to happen now probably. I, I don't know. Ray I guess said hopefully he's good to go by Mania, but it, it'll probably be Ali versus Joe then. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um but I feel like they had a lot to work with, especially with uh, uh Ray's son being there and everything like that. Oh, uh, so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> it's fantastic. And the only Shut way up that and enjoy it. The only way that it would be okay is if they put him in a shark cage over the ring. With a kid, and Dominic. Dominic. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's already, they've already had a ladder match over his custody. That's you might as true. well, I guess that you might as well true. put him in a shark cage. Yeah, they gotta sell those toys. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking of that, a couple of weeks ago when Braun Strowman broke the uh, the car, I don't know, yes, it have been yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. yeah, they had a place that place that's been out for a while. It's too. hilarious. Yeah. It's just the same exact car. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Uh, and then we have the main event, which is just the WWE title contract signing. Yep. Uh, Daniel Bryan spends. 10 minutes belittling kofi yeah pretty much um and then kofi is like not gonna happen Mm -hmm. this is my time i put in the work all the all these people believe in me i have my my brothers and uh yeah it it was a very impassioned speech on kofi's part and we hope he wins it's true (laughs) it's true um definitely true what, what what's your excitement level for wrestlemania this year um it's hard to say because i am excited in general because <laughs> i just like watching pay-per-views yeah yeah no no i, um, I get it but yeah, i i was... think this like compared to a normal pay-per-view probably more than normal oh yeah yeah um like it's not like oh like like i won't be able to sleep the night before kind of excited oh, are you sure yes but it, it's still it should be good. Yeah. There's no, no reason for it not to be. Oh no, I expect there's, it to be very good. There's a lot of potentially big moments to be happening. Right. Um a lot of disappointment to happen. 
I was going to put it a little differently, but I agree with yeah, yeah, yeah. the sentiment that, like, there's going to be a lot Let of... Letdowns, maybe, I guess? Yeah, that's probably a better yeah. way of putting it. Because a disappointment is more of, like, oh, this is what they should do. Right, right. But, well. but they might look at it differently, whereas a letdown is something where this is what they should do, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is what they choose to do mm-hmm. based off of what they should do. Like with Roman losing to Brock multiple times last year. Yeah, I didn't want to accept that. Yeah. This I'll accept because there's a good possibility that Brock holds on to that title. Forever. Forever and ever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but yeah, it should be good. Yeah. I'm excited. So. And uh, that's pretty much our show for this week. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll be back with our WrestleMania predictions. Yeah. It's a good if way to leave it. Exactly. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.